Hey everybody, it's MedTech67. Sorry it's been a while since I've had a video out. We have been pretty busy getting a lot of stuff done that you honestly don't want to see on YouTube. And honestly, this might be one of them, but it is a good diagnostic video, I think. At least, I don't know, probably will be. You tell me at the end of this when you like, comment, and subscribe. But anyways, um, we've got a 2019 Ford E350 with a 6.8 liter V10 in it. And it's got a misfire, and I watched this misfire happen in front of me. It like went from running good to not running good. We got called out because the rear heater wasn't working in the module. And while we were sitting there warming it up to see if the rear heat did indeed work or not, it started running like crap. It was running great when we started it. It started running like crap. Check engine light popped on. So we got her back to the shop. And uh, we've got a, it's saying misfires all over. But when I do a power, power balance test, I'll show you that here in a little bit. I have um, a drop on number 10. And uh, well, that's pretty much as far as I got, and I thought, you know what, this would be a good video on diagnosing misfires. So that's what we're going to do in this video. We're going to be diagnosing a misfire. So follow along. This applies to any engine out there, not just all the EcoBoost that I have on my channel. Um, I do work on these a lot. It's just I don't show them because not a whole lot of people have, you know, Econolines. A lot of people have Transits. So anyways, we're going to get started on the Diag on this video, and follow along if you want to learn how to diagnose something on a misfire. All right, so when you get a misfire... You first need to find out what you're not getting on one of your cylinders. Are you not getting fuel, air, spark, or compression? Okay? So right away, we can do something, and we want to narrow it down to which cylinder is misfiring. So the great way to do that on Fords anyway is to do what's called a power balance test. Now this is going to be under the special functions tab of any scan tool. I don't know if you're going to be able to do this on your just generic OBD scan tools that don't have bidirectional control. So you're going to have to have a scan tool of bidirectional control. We've got the Matco Maximus 4.0 here. Uh, the IDS can do it. Pretty much any you know modern scan tool out there with bidirectional control can do it. So you're going to go into your PCM module. You're going to go into power balance. Okay. So we select power balance here, and what it's going to do when it does this test is uh, it's going to measure the speed of the uh, crankshaft position sensor on the reluctor wheel. It's going to measure the speed of the crankshaft while it's running, and it's going to see which cylinder is up to fire when it drops. So we'll be able to diagnose which cylinder is misfiring. So I'm gonna start this thing up and it's not gonna sound healthy. I said I'm gonna start it. There we go. All right, as you can see, she's camming, she's camming hard. So we're gonna put it in the conditions that it wants. And you're gonna see a graph here that is going to basically be measuring the speed of the crankshaft and the corresponding cylinders that we have there. As you can see here, 10 ain't happy. 10's not happy at all, all right? And I kind of, when you heard it crank there, I kind of gave away part of the story that I think is going on already. Am I in frame there? Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll clear that off so you can see it clearly. Number 10, not happy. It also looks like number's nine. number nine's not real happy, but that may just be due to number 10. I can't be sure. So I'm gonna turn it off. So we have an idea that 10's misfiring. So is it not getting fuel? air, spark, or compression. Now, you may have heard when it was trying to start there, it sounds like we have a dead skip. Now, you guys have seen this previously on the channel. Uh, in fact, when I was in the field, when we, were first, when we had this thing over at the station, when it started running funny, I thought, no way. Hey, Tyler, put it into clear flood, flood mode for me, which is where you press down on the gas pedal. All the way, and it shouldn't start uh, most vehicles have clear flood mode. It just turns off fuel and allows you to crank and clear the cylinders out. Listen to what I'm talking about. That's a dead skip. And on a 10 cylinder, it's not as pronounced, you know, like you would with like a V6 or anything like that. But it definitely sounds like we don't have compression on one cylinder. So the next test that we can easily do is we can go to relative compression. Can you see it there? No. Okay. We're going to go to relative compression. And what this is going to do is it's going to measure the speed of the crankshaft during cranking. Okay? Now, if every cylinder is providing an equal amount of resistance when it comes up on its compression stroke, well, then it shouldn't see a whole lot of speed change. Right? And uh, what we're doing here is a lot like the power balance test. We're using the same sensors but we're using uh, the data during just cranking and not running. Because when it's running, if we lose a, you know, a fuel injector 
or a coil or something like that, it'll cause the same problem. Well, we want to narrow it down to do we have compression on the cylinder? I can't tell you how much we have, but I can tell you that if it has less than the others. So we're going to put in its test conditions here. We got to put the parking brake on. We're going to hit OK. We're going to press the accelerator down all the way. And now we're going to crank. That obviously, that's odd. We're going to do that again because now it's telling me that I have 22% compression loss on number four, uh, which it told me a little bit earlier that we have 22% loss on number 10, which lined up with the, uh, you know, the misfire on number 10. So let's run that test again. I didn't have the key on when I turned it on. Hmm. Well, that is odd. This is how far I made it before. And when I first did this test, it said cylinder 10. And now it's telling me cylinder number four, which is really weird. I don't know why it's telling me that. Hmm. Nine well, the same. Huh? Nine stayed the same. Yeah, nine still has some loss, but no, it was two that had some loss last time. Oh, it was. And now it's telling me cylinder number four. That's really odd. I don't necessarily trust the scan tool. Uh, I know for sure that we're misfiring on number 10. And I'm getting the exact same data that I did for number 10, but now on number four. So that's weird. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get to the spark plug and we're going to actually check the compression and verify what the scan tool is telling us. It really doesn't change anything what it's telling me here. So uh, on these ambulances, we have to remove both the driver and the passenger seat and get the center console out of the way and pull the doghouse off so we can get to the uh, back cylinders. Number 10 is going to be on the driver's side all the way back. So uh, we're going to do that real quick. And then when you come back with us, that's what we'll be doing. As if to prove my point, after I turned it off, I did the test one more time. And look who's screwing up now. Number 10. So I honestly, I blame this all on the scan tool. Uh, I think it had a glitch there. I think it's been number 10 that's been dead on this whole time. Like I said, trust your gut. All right, so we've got everything exposed and uh, we've got the coil off already. I kind of forgot we were making a video, to be honest. Um, Tyler, you're gonna need an extension. Well, Tyler grabs an extension there. I wanna show why I love the E350s because look at all the access you have to this engine. Spark plugs really are not hard to do on it once you get the air filter horn out of the way and all that. I mean, there's your purge valve right there. And honestly, if you didn't have to take out the seats and the con move the console back like we have here to get to it, it'd be the easiest engine ever on a vehicle to work on, period, even though it's a van. A lot of people are scared of vans for some reason. Back when they had the diesels in them, I 100% understood that, but the V10s, or the 5.4 or the 4.6, no problem. Real easy to work on. Tyler, I've ran out of filler things to say until you get that spark plug, so could, could you hurry? <laughs> Tyler finally got an uh, electric tool so we could you know, get this done by the end of the week. <laughs> and he just left the spark plug socket in the hole. This is why he's always a cameraman, because it's really hard for me to talk mad shit about him when he's behind the camera. What's that spark plug look like, Tyler? Oh! Like it's blown apart? Oh! Oh, that's bad! That's gonna need a motor. That oh, that's super bad! That hit the piston. How did that happen? Sorry, you're getting the raw and unedited version of this. <laughs> <laughs> well, it appears that a thing or two is going on in cylinder 10. It was, it's just, I'm looking like right at the edge of the piston and I want to, but we'll not do that. Oh. Oh. Oh! Oh, that's not good. That's not good at all. Well, I don't. Nope. All right, so you can see there we had something get dropped into that combustion chamber and 
just start smacking everything around it like it was Chris Brown. And I'm wondering if it's probably a part of the intake or exhaust valve. More than likely the exhaust valve. That's what my money is on because you'll notice, I'll put a picture right over here. There's a bunch of little curved marks all over the, uh, the, the top of the piston. Every market on there has a nice little curve to it. And I'm thinking that's a chunk of a valve that came off. Uh, the uh, spark plug is intact. Um, I'll show a picture of it up there too. You can see the electrode and um, the, you know, the, the strap are still there. Now the porcelain's gone, but that's because it probably got turned to powder. Um, I don't see the porcelain doing damage like that. It would just get, I know you're wrong, it could do some scratches and whatnot, but it just get chunked into powder and blown out. Uh, we'll see if it did any damage to the uh, um, catalytic converter. Uh, I sure hope it didn't. Hopefully it's just sitting right there in the front of the catalytic converter. Uh, we'll see. Usually when these uh, newer engines, when they misfire, they uh, turn off the fuel injector. And uh, that way it's not pouring uh, raw fuel into the catalytic converter and burning it up. So we'll do a teardown video on this engine. We actually head out tomorrow to Salisaw to pick up our uh, other engine for this. Um, and we'll get this one yanked out and put in. And after we get this thing put in, I'll do a, a teardown video of that engine see uh, specifically what went wrong with it but my money is on a, a piece of dropped valve right into the combustion chamber so thanks for watching like comment and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one